Hello dear viewers, here is a new video that I will please you on my channel Manwa Compilation. I hope you like my story and how I told it to you. A man unexpectedly finds himself in an enigmatic locale teeming with menacing creatures. In his memories, he recalls this place being referred to as the Blue Star. In the year 22, zero, the Blue Star calendar bore witness to the emergence of countless spatial rifts worldwide, unleashing a horde of ferocious beasts that wrought havoc and devastation. Humanity suffered immense losses at the hands of these formidable creatures, resulting in a significant loss of life. In response, humans waged a fierce battle against these enraged beasts, and identified a select few individuals with the extraordinary capacity to absorb an enigmatic airborne substance known as life force, which could modify their bodies, bestowing upon them exceptional powers. These gifted individuals came to be known as martial artists. With the aid of these martial artists, Humanity managed to establish several survival bases within the unforgiving wasteland. Reflecting on his past, the man realizes that he never expected to meet his end at the hands of a zombie attack in his previous life. As he opens his eyes to this new world, brimming with martial artists and enraged creatures, he faces immediate peril as a creature charges toward him. Skillfully wielding his dagger, he manages to fend off the creature, taking care not to make contact with its electrified body. Exerting all his strength, he pushes the creature causing a tree to topple and momentarily halt its advance. However, his dagger shatters during the struggle, casting doubt on his chances of survival against such formidable adversaries. Determined not to accept defeat, and believing that the original owner of his body lacked talent and had neglected himself for too long, the man resolves to lead a proper life, steering clear of past mistakes. Recognizing the creature's vulnerability, he directs his final strike at its exposed abdomen, at this critical juncture, a martial artist named Chen Shimi comes to his aid, effortlessly dispatching the creature. Flooded with memories, the man realizes that Chen Shimi was the original owner's fiance, and regrets how poorly the young man had treated her, unfairly blaming her for his parents' demise. Overflowing with gratitude and admiration for Chen Shimi, he holds her gently as she collapses from exhaustion. It dawns on him the sacrifices she has made, and how he had neglected her, determined to protect her. He listens as she warns of an approaching pack of wolves seeking revenge for their fallen comrade, the Purple Lightning Wolf. Despite her injuries, she urges him to depart immediately. The man's emotions oscillate between fear and resolve as he confronts the approaching wolf pack. Fueled by a newfound determination to alter his fate, he touches the fallen Purple Lightning Wolf's body, activating an absorption system that grants him the power of an intermediate enraged beast. With his body surging with energy and newfound cultivation abilities, the man rises to confront the enraged beasts. He fights with newfound agility, his wounds causing minimal pain. In his newfound strength, he swiftly dispatches the beasts, safeguarding Chen Shimi and avenging the fallen wolves. His status board indicates a significant increase in strength, comparable to that of an intermediate martial apprentice. Overwhelmed with joy, he realizes he now possesses the potential to shape his destiny in this perilous world. Chumo contemplates how absorbing power has invigorated him. His basic strength has increased by 1572 gen, doubling when he employs lightning. His status board indicates the ability to extract energy from nearby sources, giving him pause for thought. Perhaps he can draw energy multiple times from a single source. Experimenting again with the lightning wolf, he reads on the board, Success, acquired wolf's power. Although the power is weak, it aids his physical condition. Recognizing this ability is restricted to once a month, he carefully deliberates his next move, knowing the wolf is not particularly potent. He decides to take the girl home and gather some wolf meat for sustenance, since he can't absorb any more power from it. Picking up Chen Shimi, he departs. Chen experiences a troubled dream, wherein she asks Chumo to leave, but he pushes her away, remarking, I don't need your assistance. Then the wolf attacks, and Chumo sustains injuries. Chen awakens, crying out, Chumo! Despite her throbbing headache, she finds Chumo before her, preparing a hearty meal and offering her a drink. She is taken aback but immensely grateful. She inquires about the events of the previous night and how he prepared the meal. Chumo proudly discloses his culinary skills and suggests they dine together, noting that wolf meat is beneficial for martial artists. They sit down to share the meal, but an uncomfortable silence hangs in the air. Attempting to break it, Chumo mentions, Yesterday was quite perilous. 
Fortunately, a group of explorers happened upon us and came to our rescue. Yet Chen remains silent, seemingly ignoring him. Chumo feels rebuffed and excuses himself, stating, I finished eating. I'll return to my room. Please don't forget to wash the dishes. Chen feels a mixture of happiness, thinking, He cooked for me and talked to me. I hope this isn't a dream. In his room, Chumo ponders his relationship with Chen, acknowledging their discord and cohabitation challenges. He is determined to stop dwelling on it and concentrate on becoming stronger. He begins refining the blood essence of powerful beasts, although it causes discomfort in his chest. Recognizing the need for more training to alleviate the pain, he dedicates himself to rigorous practice in his room. A month passes, and Chumo undergoes intensive training, witnessing remarkable improvements in his physique. His basic strength increases by more than 600 jin, and his energy channels undergo enhancement. Thoughts of reaching higher levels of power excite him, especially with the promise of acquiring more blood essence. He yearns to grow even stronger in the coming six months and attain the strength of formidable enraged beasts. Meanwhile, Chen diligently puts in the effort in her room. With her current power level at 83.65, she knows it falls short for the upcoming hunting trial at the academy, which involves confronting a level 3 medium-grade enraged beast known as a two-headed python. To stand a chance at hunting it down, a martial cultivator needs a strength level of 10,000 jin. As she assesses her current strength, Chen realizes she has a long journey ahead. Her determination burns bright as she silently vows, I will become a martial cultivator. Chumo, just wait. I will retrieve the legendary heart of the two-headed python, which enhances one's physique. I'll make sure to obtain it for you. On another note, Chumo ventures into the bustling Luyong Safety Base commercial district. As he explores the district, he notices various enraged beast parts available for absorption. However, upon closer scrutiny, he came to a realization. All of these materials were merely at level 1. A sigh escaped him as he grasped the fact that absorbing these lower-level substances wouldn't significantly boost his current strength. He understood that he needed to set his sights on more formidable adversaries. At least a level 2 enraged beast. It was during this moment that Chumo had an encounter with a group of boys who began to taunt him. One of them sneered, Hey, isn't that Chumo the so-called pariah of our Luyong Academy? Another chimed in, What's this feeble one doing here? The jeers persisted, with one boy remarking, Kid, what's with that gleam in your eyes? Brother Kai is the true prodigy of our class, boasting a staggering strength of 6,000 jin. If it weren't for Chen protecting you, do you genuinely believe you'd still be allowed to remain at the academy? Spare us your shamelessness. You should leave Chen of your own accord. Chen and our brother Kai are a perfect match. What purpose does an outcast like you serve here, scouring for enraged beast materials? Do you even dare to participate in the academy's hunting trials? How opportune. Why don't we make use of the upcoming trial? I'll let you witness firsthand how Chen pleads and sobs beneath me. Chumo's anger surged as he retorted, You're asking for trouble! Laughter erupted from the group as another boy mocked, Look, everyone, it's that worthless weakling who can only rely on others. He still has the audacity to act tough. Tai, clearly reveling in the situation, threw down a challenge to Chumo. If you've got the guts, then show up at the hunting trial in a month. Chumo's mind raced. He understood that Kai's challenge wasn't just an idle threat. Kai intended to embarrass him. Determined not to be caught off guard, Chumo realized that he needed to prepare and strike first. He knew that if he hoped to stand a chance against Kai, he had to harness the power of at least a level 3 enraged beast. Yet locating such a formidable beast posed a challenge in itself. The enraged beasts available in the market were all disappointingly weak, leaving Chumo at a loss. Amid his contemplation, he overheard a group of individuals discussing the Wind Chaser's hunting squad. They had recently returned after successfully vanquishing a level 3 enraged beast, an earth dragon. As he eavesdropped on their conversation, Chumo felt a mix of admiration and pressure. The fact that the Wind Chasers had defeated such a formidable creature spoke volumes about their strength. Observing them from a distance, Chumo couldn't help but be consumed by a sense of admiration and longing. The situation became even more captivating when a member of the Wind Chasers squad declared that they were actively recruiting new members. They were seeking those with advanced martial practitioner strength or higher. If someone possessed elemental talents, the requirements could even be relaxed to the early stage. Chumo's status board revealed an enticing possibility. 
the acquisition of a level 3 intermediate grade enraged beast. His excitement surged, and he made a firm decision. This shall be my collection target for this month, he resolved. His choice drew him nearer to the Windchaser squad, where curiosity intertwined with hope as onlookers discussed the colossal earth dragon corpse. Chumo saw an opportunity. He approached the lifeless body and covertly commenced the collection process. It proved to be a formidable task, but he managed to remain inconspicuous. His status board soon signaled that the target was ready for absorption. Back in his training quarters, Chumo cradled the resources in his hands, ready to initiate the absorption process. However, as he began the procedure, he was struck by an excruciating wave of agony. It felt as if his bones were shattering, and he couldn't help but cry out. Just when despair threatened to overwhelm him, he noticed something extraordinary. A warm energy seemed to emanate from his heart, mending his fractured bones. Each fracture and reformation was painful, yet transformative. Gradually, the agony subsided, replaced by a sensation of lightness and speed. Chumo marveled at his newfound abilities, realizing that he now possessed an intermediate cultivation physique. A single use of this enhanced power yielded more than ten times the strength he had painstakingly acquired through rigorous training. His basic strength had been bolstered by an astonishing 500 jin, and the pace of his cultivation displayed remarkable improvement. He felt invigorated, recognizing that if his progress continued at this rate, he might attain a strength comparable to that of a late-stage martial disciple within a month. As he contemplated the implications of his transformation, his thoughts inevitably turned to his impending showdown with Kai. The long-awaited day of the hunting trial had finally arrived at Luoyang First Academy. The academy boasted a reputation as the most robust and esteemed martial arts institution in the region. Its halls were graced by formidable instructors and exceptional students. Those who achieved remarkable feats could continue their studies here until high school. However, those who failed to pass the talent and fitness tests necessary to become warriors would be relegated to the lowest rank, the Fifth Academy. The academy had a tradition of organizing trials and hunts for its students, offering an opportunity to gauge their abilities and reward the most accomplished. This very day had been earmarked for the trial, and the atmosphere buzzed with anticipation. Some students held Kai in high regard, viewing him as a genuine prodigy. They marveled at how he had swiftly ascended to the pinnacle of the intermediate master stage, amassing a formidable strength of 6,000 jin. Amidst these discussions, Chumo strode purposefully toward the academy, undeterred by the whispers trailing him. Kai took the chance to taunt Chumo, implying that his presence was driven by a desire to protect his relationship with Chen. Just as the tension between the two escalated, a teacher intervened, restoring a semblance of order to the scene. Kai persisted in provoking Chumo, questioning his ability to survive the impending trial. The teacher directed the students to form orderly lines based on their student numbers. They congregated, ready for instructions. The teacher explained that their destination was the wilderness beyond the academy's grounds. This announcement startled the students, as the wilderness was known to be a treacherous place reserved for seasoned warriors. However, the teacher reassured them by revealing that they would head to a specific area in the northern part of the city, which had already been cleared of the most formidable ferocious beasts. The remaining level 1 ferocious beasts made it an ideal location for the academy trial. Teachers Lin and another mentor were to serve as their guardians, providing a shield of security. Should any student feel overwhelmed by anxiety, they had the choice to step aside, but an undercurrent of unease lingered. Nevertheless, the students collectively resolved to remain on the bus. The teacher then proceeded to lay out the rules of the hunting trial. Points would be distributed based on the ferocity and caliber of the creatures they managed to conquer. The top three achievers would be rewarded, with the third place finisher earning a vial of level two ferocious beast blood. Second place would secure two vials, and the coveted first place position came with not only three vials of level two ferocious beast blood, but also a prestigious bronze level martial skill. The students responded with a mixture of astonishment and exhilaration at these generous rewards, particularly appreciating the recognition of exceptional feats, especially those performed by prodigies like Kai. The teacher then introduced a communication talisman that the students could employ in emergencies. Yet, it was a stark reminder that the wilderness remained a treacherous domain, even with this safeguard. With all the instructions given, the students enthusiastically voiced their comprehension. 
Kai engaged in some playful banter with his fellow students, flaunting his self-assured demeanor. However, Chumo harbored a strategic plan simmering in his mind. He keenly perceived the menace posed by Kai's burgeoning power and the formidable support of the Ju family. Determined to neutralize this threat, Chumo pledged to outscore Kai in the trial. To accomplish this, he aimed to entice Kai deep into the wilderness and seize the perfect moment for a decisive strike. As the students ventured deeper into the jungle, their eyes widened with wonder and fascination. The teacher officially initiated the hunting trial, underscoring the presence of a promising talent backed by the Ju family's ample resources. Another mentor turned to Chumo and questioned his choice to participate, emphasizing that the odds of survival for ordinary individuals in the wilderness were extraordinarily slim, hovering at a mere 1%. Exuding unwavering confidence, Chumo retorted, Thank you, teacher. But perhaps I am that 1%. Chumo contemplated the implications of Kai's energy, recognizing its role in bestowing remarkable strength and awakening unique talents in humans. He also pondered the potential for this energy to induce mutations in ferocious beasts and flora. Acknowledging the inherent risks and opportunities of the wild, Chumo concluded that hunting a beast to test his combat prowess was a prudent course of action. Suddenly, a level 1 ferocious beast, an iron spine hound, launched a surprise attack from the shadows. Chumo skillfully dodged the assault, acutely aware of his newfound prowess. Empowered by the electrifying infusion from the absorbed blood of a ferocious beast, he dispatched the hound with remarkable ease, showcasing his exceptional skill. As he assessed his situation, he realized that directly absorbing the beast's blood, following the academy's teachings, was more efficient than relying on the absorption system for low-level beasts. More beasts soon emerged, but Chumo dispatched them with astonishing dexterity. Satisfied with his performance, he mused, I've already amassed five portions of beast blood today. That should suffice. Pausing for a moment, he marveled at the transformative effects of the absorbed blood, which had significantly heightened his strength. Chumo lamented the limitation of being able to harness its power only once every three days, and yearned for the ability to continuously tap into its potency. Suddenly, a desperate cry for help pierced the air. Another student found himself in a perilous predicament, confronting a rampaging giant bear, a level 1 superior grade ferocious beast. Recognizing the potential value of spirit essence beads near the bear's den, Chumo saw an opportunity. The student implored Chumo to employ the communication talisman, proposing a joint effort to subdue the bear and share the precious spirit essence bead liquid. Chumo's heart raced with anticipation. The prospect of securing the spirit essence bead liquid, which promised a substantial advantage, ignited his determination for triumph. The giant bear launched a savage assault on a fellow student, delivering a lethal blow. Infuriated, Chumo confronted the bear, vowing to avenge his fallen classmate. However, he swiftly realized that directly challenging the bear's brute strength was not a viable strategy. Instead, he needed to exploit the bear's vulnerabilities, targeting its skills and weak points while employing his lightning-infused techniques with precise calculation. Chumo struck at the bear's electrified hide eliciting agonized roars from the beast. However, this approach inadvertently heightened the bear's rage, propelling it into a state of heightened aggression. Chumo's evasion tactics faltered, and he found himself on the receiving end of a potent blow. Undaunted, Chumo reassessed his approach, recognizing the need for a different strategy. He resolved to seize opportunities to intercept the bear's attacks, focusing on blinding the creature by targeting its eyes with his dagger. This strategy inflicted further torment upon the bear. Chumo harnessed his electric talent to further restrict the bear's movements. However, the bear's fury intensified, and it retaliated with renewed force. Struggling to maintain control, Chumo felt his resolve waver as the specter of defeat loomed. Yet a surge of energy coursed through him, a response to the blood of the enraged beast he had recently absorbed. Pain surged through his body as his strength was revitalized, reigniting his determination. With renewed vigor, Chumo rose to his feet, resuming his assault on the relentless bear. Despite the overwhelming odds stacked against him, he remained unwavering, employing a cautious and skillful approach. He focused his efforts and unleashed a final calculated attack, ultimately triumphing over the formidable beast. As he surveyed the aftermath of the battle, Chumo recognized the formidable nature of a level 1 high-grade beast. He acknowledged that the encounter had pushed him to his limits, with his very survival hanging in the balance. 
dependent on the potent restorative effects of the beast blood. Contemplating his combat abilities, Chumo recognized the potential of acquiring additional attributes such as wind talents to compensate for his current limitations. However, his thoughts were abruptly interrupted by an unexpected presence. Jukai appeared on the scene, his sudden arrival almost resembling teleportation. Chumo pondered the possibility of Jukai possessing wind attributes, given his incredible speed. Jukai's words carried a note of derision, suggesting that the fallen student's demise was merely an inconvenience, with scavenging their possessions being their primary concern. Kai's taunts served only to strengthen Chumo's resolve as he faced his rival with newfound determination. Kai, his face contorted with anger and a thirst for vengeance, strided purposefully towards Chumo, his intentions crystal clear. He sought to end Chumo's life. His voice dripped with scorn as he sneered, So you're the one betrothed to Chen, huh? Fortune and misfortune entwined, huh? Unfortunately for you, you're nothing but a feeble soul. Chumo met Kai's intense gaze, his own expression unwavering as he retorted, You've misconstrued my motives. While we may not be sworn adversaries, remember that Chen is my fiancée, and I won't stand idly by while you threaten her. With graceful agility, Chumo launched his attack, catching Kai off guard. The sudden revelation of Chumo's electrifying talon took Kai by surprise, prompting him to question, were you concealing your true prowess all this while? A blend of newfound self-assuredness and astonishment animated Chumo as he moved with unexpected swiftness, as if he had embraced the very essence of the wind itself. Could this newfound agility be attributed to the legendary wind attribute talent? Retaliation followed swiftly, Kai's blade aimed at delivering a fatal blow, but Chumo harnessed his electric power, rendering Kai's strike futile. A look of disbelief washed over Kai as his attack missed its target, yet Chumo understood that defense alone wouldn't suffice. A strategic plan was needed. While his electric prowess provided a unique advantage, Chumo realized that direct confrontation was futile. Kai sneered, you managed to shatter my void lancing blade, but let's face it, you're just an advanced martial apprentice who can't even cultivate. How is this even possible? Chumo countered Kai's words. Appearances can be deceiving. Perhaps what meets the eye is not the complete truth. Can you dodge this? With determination in his eyes, Chumo unleashed a rapid barrage of attacks, fully exploiting his electric talent. Kai's confidence faltered as Chumo's relentless assault left him struggling to defend himself. Despite his status as an advanced martial apprentice, Chumo's extraordinary command over his electric gift exceeded all expectations. Kai's attempts to evade Chumo's strikes grew increasingly desperate. Kai admitted, Your talent appears to surpass that of an advanced martial apprentice. But don't forget, I possess the wind attribute talent. My agility allows me to elude your blows. Your strength means nothing if it can't reach me. Chumo narrowly dodged Kai's retaliatory strike and realized that anticipation was the key to gaining the upper hand. He observed Kai's movements, recognizing patterns from earlier exchanges. By predicting Kai's next actions based on past behavior, Chumo deftly foresaw Kai's next position. As Kai materialized precisely where Chumo anticipated, he was powerless to evade the ensuing electric onslaught. A surge of energy overwhelmed Kai, and he fell in defeat. Kai's voice quivered with disbelief. No, this can't be happening. How could someone like me lose to the likes of you? Chumo, a sense of relief washing over him, acknowledged the payoff of his calculated approach. My predictions proved accurate. If I had squandered my energy earlier, the outcome might have been vastly different. Kai's anger simmered as he reluctantly conceded. You may have outwitted me this time, but remember, you're still nothing but a lowly scoundrel. I'll ensure you regret this when the opportunity arises. Unmoved by Kai's threats, Chumo advanced with unwavering determination. Kai's fear became palpable as he pleaded, Surely you wouldn't go so far as to end my life? My father is a formidable martial artist, and he won't let you off lightly. Standing resolute before Kai, blade in hand, Chumo's gaze remained unwavering. He declared, Your appeals won't change the outcome, silencing Kai's protests once and for all. With Kai's lifeless form before him, Chumo contemplated his next course of action. The status board offered the choice to absorb Kai's wind attribute talent. With a resolute nod, Chumo accepted. Kai's talent now merged with his own, and Chumo felt a surge of vitality coursing through his body. He felt as light as air, as if the very essence of wind had become a part of him. His speed, once ordinary, had now multiplied threefold. Furthermore, his body moved with newfound grace and agility, 
as if he were dancing with the breeze itself. Gazing upon his own transformation, Chumo marveled at the remarkable power of the wind attribute talent. Just as I suspected, this talent is truly extraordinary, he remarked with a blend of astonishment and satisfaction. However, he didn't stop at his newfound agility. Curiosity ignited within him. Could there be more to acquire from Kai's body? Chumo's thoughts then turned to the sky-splitting blade, a martial art technique Kai possessed. The blade's multiple layers intrigued him. Could the absorption system not only assimilate talents and attributes, but also the skills one had acquired? This system is indeed exceptional, he pondered. He contemplated the potential of mastering the sky-splitting blade, a technique with layers of power that could elevate his combat prowess to a new level. Amid these musings, Chumo realized that the reward for winning this trial was merely a bronze-level martial art. Nevertheless, the allure of the sky-splitting blade continued to captivate him. The blade boasted three tiers of increasing potency. If I can at least learn the initial tier, it could provide a significant advantage in battles, he mused. His determination remained unwavering as a message on his status board caught his eye, a detected special item available for collection. Without hesitation, he acquired the item, revealing a treasure map. Chumo's curiosity surged, eager to unravel the mysteries concealed within this enigmatic map. This map held the promise of great discoveries. The capabilities of the absorption system continued to astonish him. He acknowledged the map's contents, unveiling an astonishing revelation. The revelation of a 10 year spirit ascent within the Earth Dragon's lair. This revelation filled Chumo with a potent mix of awe and fascination. A spirit ascent of this magnitude held immeasurable potential. It could contain ancient knowledge and untapped power, he contemplated. As the night grew darker, Chumo's thoughts turned to the impending challenge. The exploration of the Earth Dragon's lair beckoned, but caution prevailed. Kai's connections and the Jew family's influence were forces he could not yet contend with. I must ensure my actions remain concealed, he strategized. The elemental spirit be nectar, a valuable resource, seized Chumo's attention. He collected the nectar, feeling a soothing energy surge through him. The rejuvenating effects left him invigorated, and he recognized the potential of this substance to accelerate his growth. With the newfound knowledge of the treasure map and the elemental spirit be nectar in his possession, Chumo surveyed the items he had obtained from Kai's belongings. Among them was a storage bag, a valuable item that could. Hidden within this bag lie untold riches, a genuine treasure hailing from Kai's opulent lineage, a testament to his affluent heritage. It serves as a fortress for my resources, he remarks, savoring the advantage it affords him. As the night unfolds, he muses over the diverse wealth now at his disposal. With these elemental stones, my journey of self-improvement can ascend to new heights. These precious gems, especially considering my humble beginnings, he reflects. Acknowledging the minerals and energy encapsulated within the stones that offer a tantalizing glimpse of their potential. Fully prepared, Chu now targets a final experiment, sampling the elixir known as Elemental Spirit B Nectar. Upon tasting it, he is electrified by a surge of invigorating energy, a stark departure from the torment of consuming beast blood. This nectar, he discovers, is a revelation, a source of rejuvenation and vitality. Its benefits are astounding, he admits, recognizing its potential to amplify his progress. The night persists, and his resolve remains unwavering. Before dawn breaks, I shall labor to elevate my strength further. The Earth Dragon's lair beckons, and I must be poised to confront whatever challenges lie ahead. He declares with resolute determination. Fueled by the promise of growth and armed with newfound resources, he forges ahead on his martial cultivation path. The sun barely kisses the horizon with its soft golden rays as Chu embarks on a new day of his quest, embracing it with the spirit of a determined adventurer. The system directs me to the Earth Dragon's lair in this vicinity, Chu ponders while meticulously tracing the cues etched on the treasure map. The landscape before him appears ordinary, yet he is wise to the art of deceit. This place has been meticulously scrutinized and tidied up, for the average person, uncovering the concealed treasure here would be no small feat, Chu realizes, a touch of admiration for the cunning of the Jew family evident in his voice. He inhales deeply, ready to confront the challenges ahead, and begins digging with fervent determination. Time seems to elongate as Chu delves deeper into the earth, his resolve unyielding. It's been over ten minutes when he suddenly encounters an unexpected obstacle, 
a wall seemingly conjured from thin air. His inquisitive nature kicks in, and he can't help but wonder if this is a natural geological formation or a deliberate barricade. It's then that he recalls the wind attribute talent he recently acquired from Kai. Let's put this talent to the test, Chu thinks as he channels his energy. With a surge of power, he strikes the wall using his newfound ability, and to his amazement, it crumbles before him. Beyond the barrier lies a concealed chamber, and inside, Chu's eyes widen at the breathtaking sight before him. A radiant object exuding an entrancing energy. His heart races as he approaches the treasure, his fingers trembling with a mix of excitement and reverence. Could this be the thousand-year essence? Chu contemplates, his mind a whirlwind of possibilities. The essence's aura seems to harbor secrets and enigmas, inviting him to plunge into its depths. As he cautiously cradles the essence in his hand, he feels a rush of energy coursing through him, as if he has tapped into an ancient wellspring of power. Eager to unlock its mysteries, Chu conducts a series of experiments, dipping his hand into water and observing the essence's reactions. Intriguing, he murmurs, his mind brimming with theories and questions. An idea takes shape, and before he knows it, he takes a daring plunge into the essence water. The sensation envelops him in a surreal experience. Within the essence water, Chu perceives an overwhelming weight and a kaleidoscope of emotions that seem to transcend time. It's as if the essence carries the collective emotions of the creatures that dwelled here for millennia, he marvels, his senses heightened by the powerful surge of emotions flowing into him. Emerging from the essence water, Chu feels transformed, his senses elevated to new heights. It seems the wind attribute talent has truly become a part of me, he observes, his voice tinged with wonder. He pauses to assess his other attributes, marveling at the tangible improvements he can now perceive. I consumed only four vials of beast blood last night, resulting in a modest 500-point boost to my basic strength, Chu reflects. Yet the thousand-year essence has granted me a far more substantial enhancement across various attributes. His thoughts drift to the potential applications of this newfound power, and he contemplates the intricate nature of the essence and its role in amplifying his abilities. After securely stashing the essence for future study, Chu redirects his focus to the remaining days of the trial. I still have time. Time to push myself further before the trial concludes. He resolves, his determination unwavering. As days pass and the hunting trial reaches its climax, anticipation fills the air. The teacher gathers the students, and Chu steps forward proudly, presenting his hard-earned points. Here! A total of 103 points! Chu announces, sparking gasps of astonishment from his peers. Their curiosity ignites, and they exchange whispers, striving to decipher the enigma behind his remarkable achievement. Amid the bustling crowd, Kai's friends can't help but notice his absence, and worried murmurs ripple through their ranks. Back in the jungle, the teacher's concern deepens as he inquires, Did you cross paths with Kai during your expedition? Chu's simple no only serves to intensify the teacher's frustration and suspicions. Despite the teacher's diligent search, he finds no concrete evidence, leaving him skeptical of Chu's explanation for his abundant beast materials. Despite Chu's assurances of his genuine efforts, the teacher's skepticism persists. In a surprising twist, the teacher acknowledges Chu's limitations. Chu lacks the capacity to defeat Kai, he concedes, recognizing the stark realities of their abilities. Hence, I declare Chu the first place victor of the hunting trial, the teacher proclaims, acknowledging Chu's extraordinary accomplishments. With rewards distributed and a word of caution issued due to the lurking peril that claimed Kai's life, the group prepares to depart the wilderness. The teacher imparts a piece of advice to Chu, urging him to return home and remain indoors to avoid any potential confrontation with the Ju family. Meanwhile, in the opulent halls of the Ju family estate, an authoritative figure sits in deep contemplation. News of Kai's fate reaches his ears, stirring a maelstrom of emotions. Why were there no remains left? He demands, his voice tinged with frustration. The servant's account of Kai's mysterious disappearance only serves to deepen the intrigue. Furthermore, the servant continued. The winner of the trial is the one embroiled in a passionate struggle with Kai over a woman. This revelation ignited the master's ire, turning his thoughts into a fiery blend of suspicion and intrigue. To him, a connection appeared to weave Kai's demise and the hidden treasure deep within the wilderness. 
a link that begged for further exploration and decisive action. He mused to himself, if this is tied to Kai's demise, then the treasure must be in his grasp. That's why he sent Kai on that wilderness quest. Chen Shimi arrived home to an unexpected sight. Chumo's absence. On the dining table, she found a meal thoughtfully laid out for her. She pondered how Chumo had been preparing meals for her daily since that particular day, a departure from their usual routine. The looming month-long hunting competition crossed her mind prompting her to commit to some rigorous training before indulging in her meal. Her resolve stood firm, rise to the level of a martial artist, clinch the top spot in the competition, and hunt down the coveted two-headed python's gallbladder. While glancing around, she suddenly spotted peculiar burn marks on the table leg, reminiscent of electrical scars. She wondered when these marks had appeared, as they had eluded her notice until now. Meanwhile, Chumo was engrossed in his training at a secluded spot near their base. Consulting his status board, he observed his combat value steady at 9,900 in basic strength. Almost a month had elapsed since his return from the hunting trials. The first 15 days had seen his basic strength surge to 9,900, a mere step away from ascending to martial arts mastery. However, progress had plateaued for the past 10 days. Chumo attributed this to potentially hitting the pinnacle of martial arts apprenticeship, necessitating a breakthrough to attain true martial arts mastery. Pulling a book from his pocket, a reward from the hunting trial, he contemplated practicing the techniques it contained. For him, it was not just about mastering energy control. He discovered the need to synchronize his breath, align his body's movements, and even harmonize with his racing heartbeat. While a challenging starting point for an ordinary martial artist, Chumo's thunder attribute appeared tailor-made for this technique. With the aid of his thunder attribute, his body began to move at a remarkable pace. Impressed by this newfound prowess, he entertained the idea of combining short-range teleportation with ghostly footwork in actual combat. With unwavering determination, he decided to give it another shot. Yet, as time wore on, exhaustion set in. Realizing that daybreak was upon him, Chumo headed home for a well-deserved rest. At that moment, a presence registered on his senses. A man materialized before him, prompting Chumo to inquire about his identity. The man introduced himself as Kenyon, stating that he had been dispatched by his master to extend an invitation to Chumo for a banquet. However, Chumo was uninterested and sought solitude. He declared his ignorance of Kenyon's master and a disinterest in meeting him, insisting that if Ju Chung wished to see him, he should come personally. Kenyon persisted highlighting Zhu Cheng's potential to become a master martial artist and his prominence within the lying base. He questioned whether Chumo would refuse an audience with such a significant figure. Connecting the dots and realizing Zhu Cheng's connection to Kai, Chumo made a conditional agreement. He agreed to meet Zhu Chen, but only if Zhu Chen came in person. Before proceeding further, he probed Kenyon to reveal his own identity. This question irked Kenyon, prompting an attack and accusations of ignorance. He warned Chumo that refusal was not an option, threatening to capture Chumo himself if he declined the invitation. Chumo's wind attribute allowed him to elegantly evade Kenyon's attack, taking him by surprise. Drawing his sword, Kenyon was startled to see a weapon identical to the one Kai had wielded, a realization that hit him hard. Tensions soared, and Kenyon accused Chumo of being responsible for Kai's death. In response, Chumo tapped into his powers and launched an attack from behind, employing Kai's signature move, the Breaking Blade. Kenyon's anger flared as he employed his Vulture Claws ability, charging Chumo while accusing him of harming the young master. He demanded answers from Chumo. Chumo's response was succinct. He aimed to facilitate a direct meeting between Kenyon and the young master. Kenyon remained baffled by the strength of Chumo's Breaking Blade, given that both possessed the Wind Attribute. He questioned the source of Chumo's superior skill and declared his intent to take Chumo for interrogation, launching an all-out assault. However, Chumo's defenses held firm, surprising Kenyon. Reflecting on the situation, Chumo realized that Kenyon possessed the strength of an early-stage martial artist. In comparison, Chumo's abilities had evolved significantly, rendering such opponents non-threatening. The two clashed once more, this time with greater force. Chumo, Confident in his newfound strength, believed he had discerned a weakness in Kenyon's defense. Yet, Chumo had a trump card up his sleeve. As Kenyon drew near, Chumo seized the moment with a knowing smile. 
He mentioned he had been waiting for this opportunity, gripping Kenyon's face with his palm and unleashing his unique Thundering Sky ability. The resulting impact sent Kenyon crashing to the ground, setting the area ablaze with dazzling purple lightning. Surveying the aftermath, Chumo saw Kenyon defeated on the ground. Triumph coursed through him as he deemed Kenyon no match for his current strength, an early-stage martial artist. However, his victory was tainted by growing apprehension regarding Ju Chung's might. Fearing Ju Chang's suspicions surrounding Kai's death, Chumo couldn't shake the notion that Ju Chang might come for him personally. With this newfound realization, Chu Chin's potential for power seemed to surge. Determined to swiftly progress from an apprentice to a master, Chumo devised a bold strategy. He envisioned delving deeper into the wilderness, shattering his own limits through combat, and emerging with even greater might. His destination, the martial arts supply hall, a pivotal hub where martial artists gathered to exchange resources, undertake missions, and claim rewards. As he entered, his inner mantra echoed, I must grow stronger before venturing into the wilderness. Inside the bustling martial arts supply hall, Chumo's attention was drawn to a boutique called Jade House, owned by the illustrious Jade Business Alliance. Upon stepping in, he was warmly greeted by a courteous young woman who inquired, How may I assist you today? Chumo shared his plan to explore the wilderness and sought her guidance on essential gear. The girl smiled and responded, You've come to the right place. Our store offers a wide array of wilderness survival kits, including first aid supplies and various essentials. Nearly every martial artist relies on these. Amid intrigued onlookers, Chumo selected a lavish kit priced at 600 yuan, prompting curious whispers about his martial prowess. A short distance away, a young girl pleaded with adventurers for aid, but her requests fell upon irritated ears. One man gruffly declined, deeming the task too perilous and challenging for him. The mission involved confronting a level 2 ferocious beast known as the Two-Headed Python, a test of mid-level martial prowess. He urged the girl to seek assistance elsewhere. Her tale was one of sorrow, having lost her parents at a tender age and later being adopted. Sadly, her adoptive mother had fallen gravely ill, and the cure required the heart of a formidable creature, the level 2 two-headed python. Yet, no one dared to assist, save for a special egg that would hatch in a decade. Chumo, confident in his burgeoning strength, saw the task as an achievable feat. Luckily, the lair of the two-headed python was Dashu Mountain, Chumo's intended destination. He decided to lend a hand to the young girl's desperate quest. Approaching her, he asked, Is the task still available? The girl affirmed its availability, and Chumo committed to taking it on. Two days later, Chumo found himself at Dashu Mountain, a relatively secure region within 20 miles of lying base. It served as both a training ground for base recruits and a gathering place for resourceful martial artists. Amid the dense forest, he encountered numerous level 2 low ferocious beasts known as Iron Mantises. After half a day of fierce battles, he felt the transformative impact of his training. With his innate affinity for thunder and lightning, his strength surged to 50,000 Jin. His relentless pursuit of resources and treasures from the beasts honed his abilities, with only a hair's breadth separating him from mastering the Ghost Steps technique. Determined, he vowed to seek out the elusive two-headed python once he attained the rank of a full-fledged martial artist, keeping his promise to the young girl. Meanwhile, back at the academy, an assembly of considerable size had congregated, and rumors swirled regarding its purpose. Whispers suggested it might concern the announcement of the academy's general trials, while others speculated that the dean's arrival was the cause. Suddenly, a group of imposing figures entered arousing curiosity. It wasn't long before the Dean of the Academy, the revered Grand Master of Martial Arts, Shen Jin, made his grand entrance. He implored the students to hush and disclose that this year's student hunting competition would be unlike any before. Revealing a groundbreaking partnership between Lion Base and Changfang Base, he outlined plans for a two-city trial that would welcome students from various academies and martial arts schools, even those from Changfang's Martial Arts Academy. The announcement sent shockwaves through the assembly, as they recognized the magnitude of this unprecedented trial. The two-city trial held the promise of greater rewards, but also heightened risks. Acknowledging the students' apprehensions, the dean reassured them. He confirmed that the trial's location on the treacherous outskirts of Dashu Mountain needed no further explanation of its perils. To offer flexibility 
students were granted the option to form teams and the freedom to withdraw from the trial if it became too daunting. Highlighting the balance between danger and opportunity, the dean emphasized the bountiful rewards offered by both bases. The prospect of storage bags, martial arts techniques, blood, and primordial stones for the top 10 teams and individuals stirred excitement, prompting many to eagerly express their willingness to participate. Amid the excitement over these enticing rewards, Chen Zue breathed a sigh of relief that Chuma was absent. He deemed the trial excessively perilous for his friend. Having recently ascended to the realm of martial artists, Chen Zue was determined to secure a spot among the top ten and vanquish the two-headed python to obtain its heart, a feat that would elevate Chumo's standing among the students. Tensions flared when Zhu Guang, a student from Qiangfeng, ridiculed lying students, igniting a scuffle. The same girl who earlier saved the main character intervened, extinguishing the conflict. She questioned Zhu Guang's identity, asking if he was Zhu Guang. Observers noted that private brawls were not tolerated on the premises. Zhu Guang, catching sight of the girl, remarked, I didn't expect such a beautiful girl to be here at this small lying academy. A stern teacher intervened, scolding both parties and signaling their departure. Zhu Guang, before leaving, directed a parting comment at the girl. I'll see you in Dashu Mountain, little beauty, leaving the crowd in astonishment. Three days elapsed and Chumo found himself amidst the expansive wilderness of Dashu Mountain. Towering trees enveloped the landscape, and his weariness bore witness to three days of relentless combat with ferocious beasts. The rumbling sounds echoing from various directions signaled a breakthrough on the horizon. Reflecting on this, Chumo remarked with determination, The tiger and thunder leopard roar within me, heralding a breakthrough. He unveiled that, after bearing his vulnerability, the savage beast launched an unrelenting assault upon him. In response, he imbibed a potion that awakened the dormant powers of the lightning wolf within him. He described the sensation as an electrifying surge coursing through every fiber of his being, an energy he couldn't quite control but desperately needed. With a beckoning call, he summoned these newfound powers to his aid, and suddenly, a luminous aura of violet lightning enveloped his entire form. In a swift, formidable motion of his blade, he obliterated the ferocious beasts in a single, breathtaking stroke. What unfolded was a spectacle with Chumo, standing amidst the lifeless remains he had just defeated. He then performed a purification technique known as the Jinger Cleansing, marveling as it purged every impurity from his body, a testament to its incredible potency. His status board displayed a staggering battle value calculation. His core strength now stood at a formidable 17,710 Jin, enhanced by attributes of both wind and thunder. Overwhelmed by this newfound might, he exclaimed, I've surpassed the 10,000 threshold of my core strength. With the added attributes of thunder and wind, I can now challenge even a mid-stage martial artist. Confidence surged through him as he contemplated, I need not fear Zhu Chang any longer. I'm almost ready to face him in battle. Yet, just as he was pondering his next move, a distant noise rustling behind the trees abruptly drew his attention a noise that would alter the course of his mission. Before him materialized a colossal level two medium ferocious beast, the two-headed python. He mused, originally, I ventured toward the two-headed python's habitat during my practice, but I hadn't anticipated encountering it so soon. It must have been lured by the commotion of my breakthrough. This monstrous creature possessed two heads, fiery crimson eyes, and a size that rendered Chumo minuscule by comparison. Bracing himself with a firm grip on his sword, Chumo prepared for a formidable confrontation. Judging by the creature's level and the aura it exuded, he deduced it matched the strength of a level 2 advanced ferocious beast, akin to a late-stage martial artist. The python initiated its attack with a venomous gas assault, forcing Chumo to execute nimble evasions. Suddenly, a second head emerged, aiming a potentially fatal strike, thwarted only by Chumo's lightning-quick agility. As the python unleashed more paralyzing venom, Chumo's anxiety grew. Activating his wind attribute, he harnessed the swiftness and grace of Mogan's steps to dodge these relentless attacks. He remarked, The python's two heads move in perfect synchrony. Each attack propels me towards the other head. I mustn't let it seize my momentum, or it could prove disastrous. Amid the chaotic battle, one of the python's heads tore through Chumo's shirt sleeves, showcasing its incredible speed. 
Chumo struggled to evade the ceaseless assault. Realizing that he couldn't prolong the fight, he devised a strategy. Concentrating energy in his legs, he unleashed the second tier of his Ghost Steps ability. Despite the python's rapid onslaught, Chumo managed to elude it, capitalizing on the creature's momentary confusion. In a decisive strike, he severed one of its heads. The python writhed in agony, spewing venom and fury. Chumo noted that his breakthrough had succeeded. His speed had now doubled. He effortlessly sidestepped the venomous attacks. Gathering his remaining strength, he delivered a final blow, extinguishing the python's life. A sigh of relief escaped him as he contemplated. Thankfully, ghost steps broke through during the battle. Otherwise, the two-headed python would have been an insurmountable challenge. Then, he recalled his original mission, retrieving the two-headed python's heart for the young girl as well as its gall for its potential health benefits. He decided to collect all these items, exclaiming, I might even procure 20 vials of beast blood, a remarkable haul. I'll take its hide as well. It could serve as valuable protective gear. Placing these items securely in his bag brought immense satisfaction. He reflected, All that strenuous battling wasn't in vain. I've gained a wealth of precious resources. With his task now accomplished, he pondered, It's time to head back having secured all the items I required. As he contemplated visiting the supply hall for additional techniques, a desperate cry pierced the air, a wounded girl fleeing from ferocious beasts. Without hesitation, Chumo sprang into action, swiftly dispatching the attacking creatures with his blade. Turning to the girl to inquire about her situation, he was met with tears and a question. Are you Chumo, the betrothed of Chen Zui? Recalling her as an elite class member named Dai Jin, he asked, what brought you to this place? She tearfully recounted how they had encountered the Wind Wolf King and Zula. Disturbingly, she revealed that Chen Zui had accompanied them and was now in grave danger. The mention of Chen Zui left Chumo stunned, and he probed further, asking, Where is Chen Zui, and what has transpired? Jingxi gazed at Chumo with a blend of astonishment and disbelief, her eyes reflecting both surprise and admiration. She recognized him as the same Chumo who had once required Chen Shimi's protection, a transformation that astonished her, given his earlier reputation for struggling with cultivation. Witnessing the fear in her eyes, Chumo took a step back, concerned that he had unintentionally frightened her. He inquired about her well-being, and sought details about her encounter with Chen Shimi. Fear still evident in her eyes, the girl commenced her harrowing tale. She recounted how their academy competition had been transformed into a challenging two-city trial, with Changfeng Beise situated in Dash Mountain this time. While collecting spirit grass, they had fallen prey to a pack of relentless wind wolves. Somehow, they had managed to break free, only to encounter Zhu Guang from Changfeng Base and his cohorts. Hearing that name triggered a wave of memories and apprehension in Chumo. She continued, revealing that Chen Shimi had intervened, halting Zhu Guang and the elite class students, urging them to flee. By the time she escaped, Chen was already gravely injured. With teary eyes, she implored Chumo to rescue Chen and disclosed the location of the incident, roughly 10 miles to the southeast. Reassuring her of his commitment to the rescue mission, Chumo advised her to rest while he set out to locate the rest of the elite class. Swiftly, he made his exit from the scene, leaving Jing Shi with a newfound admiration for him. She realized that despite her initial fear of the pursuing wind wolves in Zuguan, meeting Chumo had granted her an unexpected sense of relief as if he were the sole savior for Chen. Deep within the dense forest, Chen and Zhu found themselves locked in an intense gaze. Chen, once a solitary victor against many foes, now appeared utterly exhausted and frail. With a taunting tone, Zhu Guang commented, I did warn you about the ineptitude of your deceitful base. Your ability to overcome my men on your own showcases your considerable strength. Join me, and a bright future awaits. Chen countered. You're nothing but a manipulative opportunist. How can you take pride in orchestrating a cowardly ambush, exploiting ferocious beasts' power? You're a coward, plain and simple. In response, Zhu Guang erupted into hysterical laughter, seemingly confirming her accusations of him using ferocious beasts as weapons. Her anger surged, and she advanced aggressively toward him. Zhu Guang, labeling her stubborn, mirrored her advance, channeling all his power into his weapon. A powerful strike landed on Chen, highlighting their stark power difference. In her weakened state, she struggled to rise but couldn't. 
Seeing her injured and vulnerable, Zhu Guang momentarily felt pity. He once again extended an offer for her to join forces, saying, I genuinely pity your situation. So, here's one last chance. Will you align with me or not? Chen, overcome by pain, couldn't respond. Zhu Guang pointed his weapon at her and stated, Ever since I mastered advanced saber techniques and claimed leadership at the Changfeng base, no one has dared to defy me. But if you refuse, I won't force you, though I'll have no choice but to end your life. I'll grant your final wish and send you on your way. Facing dire circumstances, Chen pondered if this was the end. She closed her eyes, accepting her fate and preparing for the inevitable. However, just as Zhu Guang's sword was about to strike, Chumo arrived at the critical moment, shouting HALT and deflecting Zhu Guang's sword with his own. Zhu Guang was forcefully pushed back, steadying himself by driving his weapon into the ground. His body trembled from the swiftness and power of the attack. Zhu Guang, looking at Chumo, couldn't hide his astonishment and questioned, I've achieved mid-level martial artist status. How can someone like you surpass me? When did someone of your caliber appear at the lying base? Just who are you? Chumo stood as a protective shield for Chen, emitting a menacing presence with an energy aura enveloping him. Chen, hearing a familiar voice, slowly attempted to open her eyes. She saw a figure's back but couldn't discern the face. This enigmatic figure stood facing away, acting as a human shield for her. Infuriated and intent on taking a life, Zhu Guang launched his attack. Recognizing the formidable nature of Zhu Guang's high-level blade and ice talents, along with his potent dual attributes, Chumo decided to employ the Ghost Steps technique for his counterattack. However, his situation was complex because he needed to defend without evading to protect Chen from harm. With sword in hand, Chumo assumed a defensive stance, trying to deflect the barrage of Zhu Guang's strikes. Despite his best efforts, Chumo struggled to fend off all the attacks, resulting in Chen taking a hit from one of Zhu Guang's strikes. In disbelief, Chumo glanced behind, wondering how he hadn't intercepted that particular attack. Fueled by anger, he launched a formidable assault against Zhu Guang, who observed his opponent's struggle and exclaimed, What's happening? You're clearly not a late-stage martial artist. At best, our realms are similar. How can you neutralize my attacks? Ultimately, Chumo managed to break through Zhu Guang's defenses, striking him multiple times rapidly, resulting in Zhu Guang's demise. In response to Zhu Guang's inquiry, Chumo replied, Thanks to the collection system, talents are added to my fundamental strength, making the impossible achievable. After defeating his opponent, he sighed in relief and instinctively checked his pockets, hoping to find something valuable. His fingers brushed against a storage bag, eliciting a delighted smile as he realized his discovery. Fueled by curiosity, he unzipped the bag to reveal its contents. What he saw filled him with pure joy. Tens of thousands of low-grade UN stones and a plethora of ferocious beast materials. His attention soon shifted to Chen Shimi. Observing her severe injuries, he quickly made a crucial decision. Giving her the storage bag seemed like a prudent choice, as the materials within could greatly aid her in the upcoming trial. However, he also recognized the importance of tending to Zhu Guang's body to prevent potential complications. Therefore, his top priority became finding a secure location for Chen. As they moved to a safe spot, his mind couldn't help but dwell on the materials he had acquired earlier. Once the situation was under control, he eagerly anticipated examining and absorbing them with unwavering determination. He extended his hand toward Zhu Guang's body and felt excitement as the status board displayed his successful absorption of the advanced saber talent. To test his newfound talent, he took to the skies, gracefully wielding his swords in a swirling dance of steel. To his astonishment, he could feel the rhythm and aura of the blades as though they possessed a life of their own. Suddenly he sensed a presence nearby, something ferocious lurking in the shadows. Seizing this opportunity, Chumo wasted no time in dispatching the beast with ruthless precision. Reflecting on the wild frost and thunderblade he had acquired from Zhu Guang, he couldn't help but admire its quality and ease of use. While the ice attribute wasn't his inherent talent, it had become an integral part of his sword technique. Examining the status board, he was taken aback to find silver rank techniques listed. It dawned on him that Zhu Guang was truly exceptional, excelling not only in advanced saber techniques, but also possessing the rare wild frost and thunderblade, along with silver level martial artist techniques. Blending his dual talents with his innate power, 
bolstered by the assistance of the absorption system, held the exciting potential to surpass even the legendary Zuguang. A newfound determination etched across his visage as he beseeched the system to unveil his current abilities, eagerly poised to delve into his untapped potential. The status board materialized, laying bare vital details about the host. It showcased a formidable basic strength of 18,290, complemented by the electrifying thunder and wind attributes. Notably, the host possessed a mastery of advanced blade cultivation, a profound connection with the advanced thunder attribute, and an innate affinity for the advanced wind attribute. Moreover, a formidable array of high-level skills graced his arsenal. Gazing upon his remarkable stats, he couldn't suppress his contentment with the fruits of his arduous cultivation. The time to return was nigh, and as he glanced at his time-worn sword, 